subscribe and hit the bell icon. The White Spotted Bamboo Shark. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. It's such a warm day, so I'm gonna let my pet turtle cool off in the pond. <laughs> Did I give you an idea, Hero? Wow, look at that big fish. It's trying to grab the turtle. There you go. I didn't know we had such a big fish in our pond. Let me scoop it out with the tank. Hey, this big fish looks like a small shark. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything about the baby shark? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is a white spotted bamboo shark, but it's not a baby. It's a young adult. But I thought sharks were big and scary animals. Not all sharks are big and dangerous, Leo. Adult bamboo sharks will not grow longer than one meter in length. So this bamboo shark is almost fully grown. And bamboo sharks are harmless to humans. So where does the bamboo shark come from? White spotted bamboo sharks are found in coral reefs in the Pacific Ocean around Southeast Asia. What's a coral reef? A coral reef is made up of tiny animals called polyps. Polyps stay in one place and form the shapes of the coral reef. A coral reef can be very colorful and is filled with many living creatures, such as plants and fish. Wow! Coral reefs are beautiful! Bamboo sharks live in coral reefs because most of the small animals they eat are found there. The bamboo shark uses his small teeth to hold onto its prey and crush them. The coral reef also provides protection for the bamboo shark because there are a lot of places to hide from predators. Hmm, our pond doesn't have a coral reef, so we should bring the bamboo shark back to where it belongs. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. With our Jeep, we should get there in no time. A big shark is following us, Leo. Don't worry, Katie. I'll go a little faster. It's one of the great white sharks, the great hunters of the sea. They can swim very fast and they sometimes eat smaller sharks. As long as we're in the Jeep, we're safe. It's another great white shark. Leo, the bamboo shark has fallen into the sea. Come back, Hero. It's too dangerous. The sharks are coming this way. Where's Hero? I can't see him. Look, Hero found a reef. He's standing on it. That's great. The great white sharks won't be able to swim there. Full speed ahead. The bamboo shark is almost on the other side. We made it. We escaped the big sharks. Enjoy, bamboo shark. We did it! We found a new home for the bamboo shark! Hooray! We found 
a white spotted bamboo shark in our pond. We learned that bamboo sharks are small and harmless to humans, and that they live in the coral reefs of the Pacific Ocean. So we brought the bamboo shark to a safe spot in a colorful coral reef. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Indian peacock. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy. Hero, leave that bird alone. <coughs> Be nice, Hero. You're much bigger than that bird. Hey look, the bird dropped a feather. Feathers are important because they help birds fly, keep them warm, and hide them from predators. You found another feather, Hero. It must be from another bird. Look, it has a different color. Let's see if we can find more feathers. What is it, Hero? You found another feather? Wow, is that a feather? It looks so different from the other feathers. It's so big and it's so colorful. What was that? Wow, it's a big and beautiful bird. I wonder what kind of bird this is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Wow, look at those feathers. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. So, the bird you found is... It's an Indian peacock, also known as a blue peacock. Well, it definitely is blue. And it's called an Indian peacock because it comes from India? That's right. It's usually found in the rainforests of India and Sri Lanka. Peacocks eat seeds, fruits, insects, and even small animals like lizards and snakes. What else did you find out, Katie? Actually, a peacock is a male, like the one you found. And a female is called a peahen. The peacocks, or males, are more colorful and have bigger tail feathers. The peahens, or females, have more dull-looking colors. Both the male and female are called a peafowl. So it's an Indian peafowl. Correct. Not all peafowls are blue, though. Some are born with white feathers. And peafowls are one of the largest flying birds in the world. Such an interesting bird. I don't think it belongs in our garden. We should bring the peacock back to its friends. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Gee, we should get there in no time. What is it, Hero? Leo, it looks like some big cats are following us. They could be jungle cats, Katie. It says jungle cats are one of the peacock's predators. This means jungle cats hunt peacocks for food. Don't worry, Katie. We're safe in the jeep. It looks like we have a flat tire. Can we change it? There's no time. Those jungle cats are too close. Quick, let's start walking. <gasps> there are too many. scared the jungle cats away by making itself look big. 
Good work, Peacock. Your feathers are really useful. We did it! We found a group of peahens. Hooray! in our garden. We learned that peacocks are male peafowls. They have big tail feathers to impress the females, which are called peahens. So we went to the rainforest and found a group of peahens for the peacock. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Malayan Water Monitor. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, I'm trying to get better at swimming, but it's not fun practicing alone. Why don't we swim together? You go first, Hero. Wow, you're a natural hero. Maybe I should try it your way. Ah, it's a crocodile. There's a small crocodile in the pool. Boy, that was scary. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So if it's not a crocodile, what is it? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is a water monitor. There are different types of water monitors, and the one in our pool is a Malayan water monitor. I see. Still, it sure looks like a crocodile. It's easy to mistake water monitors for crocodiles, especially when they're in the water. But if you look closely, they are quite different. Water monitors have a shorter snout and a longer, thinner tail as compared to crocodiles. But like crocodiles, water monitors are often found near water and are excellent swimmers. This is because the long, powerful tails of water monitors are used to propel them through the water. Wow! Maybe I should learn how to improve my swimming from a water monitor. <laughs> Don't get too close, though. Water monitors will defend themselves if they feel threatened. I see. So, what kind of food do water monitors eat? They eat small animals, fish, and birds. But if they want to, they can eat anything they can swallow. Yikes! I don't think the water monitor belongs here. What if it eats all the animals in our garden? Well, normally, Malayan water monitors don't live in gardens. They live in forests in different countries in South and Southeast Asia. The one you found comes from this place. Hmm. I think we should return the water monitor to its natural home in the forest. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. I'm sure the water monitor would be happy to go back home. See you downstairs. There are too many rocks on this bank for the water monitor to dig its home. Look, Leo. What about the bank on the other side? Hmm, that looks like a good place, Katie. There aren't as many rocks over there. Come on, everyone. Let's go over there. Here we go. Whoa! Leo! The float is losing air. What's happening, Hero? 
Let me take a look. A large fishing hook pierced the float. We need to get the hook out and fix the float. Leave the fishing hook to me, Leo. Good luck, Katie. There. But we're losing a lot of air. If we don't fix the float, the Jeep will sink. We have to cover the hole. What can we use? The water monitor covered the hole by sitting on it. Thanks, water monitor. Great. Let's head to the riverbank. We made it. Good work, water monitor. Goodbye, little friend. We did it. We found the water monitor's home. Great job, everyone! Yay! Yay! Today, we found a Malayan water monitor in our garden. We learned that water monitors live in forests where they build their homes near water. So we went to a riverbank in the forest and found its home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The common tree frog. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. Do you also love jumping in puddles when it rains, Hero? <laughs> Let's see who can make the biggest splash. It's a frog. This frog sounds like a duck. And it has lines on its back. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Smile, Mr. Frog. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. The frog you found is a common tree frog, but it's also known as a four-lined tree frog because some of these frogs have four long lines running down their backs, just like this one. The common tree frog lives in trees and spends most of its life hopping from branch to branch, high in the treetops. I see. But how is the frog able to stay up in trees? The common tree frog has special sticky toes that help it hang onto branches and tree trunks. Like all frogs, common tree frogs are amphibians. Amphibians are animals that can live in water and on land. Common tree frogs spend the beginning of their lives in the water as tadpoles. Tadpoles are newborn baby frogs that hatch from eggs. When tadpoles grow into adults, they leave the water and live in trees. I see. So, what kind of food do common tree frogs eat? They eat insects and worms. They can be found in all kinds of places with water and trees in different countries in Southeast Asia. Hmm, I think we should return the tree frog to its natural home, where it can find a lot more trees and food. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. There's rubbish everywhere. Look, Katie, are those tadpoles in the mud? 
Those aren't tadpoles, Leo. They are mudskippers. Mudskippers are, well, a type of fish. Fish? Then why are they not in the water? That's because mudskippers can live on water and on land. While underwater, they breathe through gills like other fish. When the mudskippers are on land, they can breathe through their skin as long as they stay wet. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Wait, is the frog still on my hat, Katie? Oh, no! He's missing again! He must be somewhere around here. Hmm, we can't find the frog with so much litter around. We should clean up the place first. Good idea, Katie. I bet the mud skippers will be happy too if the litter is gone. Let's clean up the place and look for the tree frog together. tree frog and we've cleared away the litter. Great work everyone. Wow, there are so many of them. We did it. We found the tree frog's breeding ground. Great job everyone. Hooray! Yay! a common tree frog in our garden. We learned that common tree frogs live in trees and that male common tree frogs gather around still water where they use their loud calls to attract females. So we went to the forest and found it a nice spot near a stream. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. <laughs>